So my name is Jim Hayes. Uh, I'm an engineer and an artist. I started out in engineering and it evolved into doing movie props and, and then uh, actual art pieces. This, of course, is the Mojo Extractor from Austin Powers 2. Uh, and it actually really works. It, it's, it's a real syringe. Uh, it'll actually extract Mojo. It'll actually extract Mojo. So for the film, I built a manifold that this went in and they could actually pull the liquid and the mojo right out of the manifold. And it had four different colors in it and they just went in as these little wormy things. My piece de resistance is uh, Dr. Evil's chair and Minimi's chair, both functional in every way, shape and form. There's me on the set in the Dr. Evo's chair. So I got out of the service in the late 60s. I went to work in, as a draftsman for a, an aerospace company that built test equipment. I was there for 15 years, about, and the owner took a liking to me in the beginning and gave me engineering classes every three times a week. So he really gave me my mechanical engineering background. And then about 20 years ago, uh, a girlfriend at the time had a friend that owned a prop house <clears throat> in Los Angeles and they were looking for a director of manufacturing. Um, so I interviewed with the guy and he hired me on the spot. So I actually doubled my salary, my annual salary, in one move after 15 years of doing engineering. So it was pretty cool to get paid a ton of money to make crazy, crazy stuff. We did some minor after work on Jurassic Park 2. We did the mosquito uh, in the uh, amber for his cane and all of that. These are daggers from Scorpion King. I think this is the one that cut Scorpion King's brother's head off. When I was at the hand prop room in Los Angeles, uh, we did uh, the rock there and uh, the string of pearls bomb uh, was actually green hair gel. It was Prell inside the uh, each glass bowl. A couple years ago, England did an expose on why they got into the mid war in the Mideast, and their intel said, the report came back, their intel said that they had chemical warfare similar to the bomb used in the rock. And then they actually had a picture of the bomb from the rock in the, uh, in the report. I'm like, okay. Not good, start of the war. One of my favorite directors, well, actually, I would have to say that he's my favorite director that I w have worked for in my entire career in the film industry, and that's David Lynch. Uh, I did a couple of films f with him, I, uh, but the first one that I did was Mulholland Drive. Prop Master at the time came out and said, okay, we need this, uh, we need a couple of things. We need the, a wheelchair, sort of like a, Richard Stark style, whatever, which I designed and he accepted the design and we built that. Uh, but it's for a little person to stand in and we built a body so he looked like a six foot tall person. There's the chair with uh, the actor in it and the fake body. So you see his head and his hand are the only thing that's really his. And then also he wanted an alien safe. So he comes to me and he says, okay, we need this three inch square block of aluminum polished and a triangular little hole in one side and then anodized blue so it looked like blue shiny and I said okay so we manufactured that. David came back to him about a month later and said we need the same thing but now I need this key designed and this key needs to go in the triangular hole that needs to rotate so that it looks like it's opening and then the box has to open up but I don't want to see any hinges. I don't want to see, it can't look any different than the square block of aluminum. I have a cousin who's a master machinist and he's just incredible. So we designed this little block with uh, pin style hinges that are basically just posts up through one edge with springs on them so you could sort of lift it up and down. We step the inside of the lid like a safe so that when you open it up that those steps actually hide even those two little pieces coming up in the back. 
My cousin took a machine cut on everything after it was all assembled so that you would, so all the lines would be as tight, joints would be as tight as possible. I took it out to the set and David was in his trailer. He had just finished meditating. He comes up and he goes, hey Jim, how's it going? And I handed him, I go, good, here's the safe. And I handed it to him and he goes, oh man, that's beautiful. Where's the one that opens? And I said, no, that's the one that opens. Lift it up. And he lifted up and his words were, it's over the moon. That was my, it was like, it was better than money, you know, it was just so cool. This is my therapy, so when I'm not building something for somebody else, this is what I do to calm myself down and just relax. I bought it as a partial kit and put it together over the last two years. Just recently it's become a real car. It's all titled as a 32 Ford in Bowie, Texas. But I wanted my tattoo artist, Micah Harold, to do, uh, he did this, he did my arms, but uh, I wanted to do a dragon. So I said, hey, Micah, can you put like two little dragons on the two sides of the gauges? It's fun for me. This is where, this is my therapy. It keeps me sane doing stuff like this. I've been building cars as a hobby since I was probably 16 or 17 years old. I got really lucky with that whole combination, you're right, because my, my props ended up being more in the mechanical side, uh, in the beginning especially, uh, and then uh, I have the ability as an artist to design something. Here in Shreveport I did a, a 26 foot tall metal flamed canopy on top of a fire tower, a 60 foot tower, and I did, I designed it, uh, I did all the engineering, I sent it to a civil engineer and had it certified and then we built it here. Uh, so I, I have the ability to get that all done and go take it from the beginning all the way to the end piece. And uh, for me it's been a really big advantage. Other artists come to me and say, hey, will you build my art piece? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So it's very cool.